how do we turn a loss into a win? Derek Mazzarella with Gateway Financial Partners. Today, we're going to talk about a concept called tax loss harvesting. Before I get into a little bit about what that is, one of the things that people always look at is the market. And in up times, when the market's going up, like we see here, most people are pretty happy. There's good opportunities there. But when the market drops, people tend to freak out and overreact. One of the things that we should really do is look for opportunities in both types of markets. The market's going well, you know, it's easy to invest, but when the market's dropping, we want to make sure we're taking advantage of all of these drops in markets. So they don't always have to even be the big drops. As you see here, there's some periods where there's some smaller drops um, that aren't as significant as, you know, the, the crash of 2008. Um, so how does tax loss harvesting tie into the, the market drops? Well, I'm going to get into it in a second. Before I do that, I really want to take a step back and talk about how investments are taxed. So when it comes to you know, qualified assets, like traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs, basically you're putting money, you're getting taxed either before or at the end, but you're never getting taxed you know, each year on it. So you're deferring taxes or you're essentially paying your tax today and never paying them again in terms of a Roth 401k or Roth IRA. But then we have accounts called non-qualified. And typically, these are going to be investment accounts. And they're taxed basically a little differently than qualified accounts. So you're putting money in, you're using after-tax dollars, some money that's already been taxed. Each year, you're typically paying taxes. And then also, when you do sell it, you're going to be paying taxes again. So definitely not as tax efficient as qualified funds, but you do get the benefit of having a little bit more investment flexibility and you do have the ability to take money out without penalty. Okay. So I want to talk today a little bit about this. So when you get taxed every year. So when you have an investment account, every year you're going to get a 1099 from whoever you have your, your investments with. And that's going to be essentially a tax bill. And the reason you're getting that is, is one of three things or all three things or a combination of them happen. So first, you may get dividends from your investments. So if you hold uh, a company stock and they pay dividends each year, which is really just returning profits back to shareholders and shareholders are actually owners of the company. So whether you have a mutual fund that has uh, those types of companies or you have an index fund or you have an ETF, all of those dividends come back and they are basically a form of income. So those are taxed. Next, if you have any fixed income, People also refer to those as bonds. If you get those interest payments and those coupon payments, as long as it's uh, you know, not on a municipal bond, you're going to get taxed on that as well. And then third, if you sell the stock in the middle of the year, or let's say you own a mutual fund and they're buying and selling stocks throughout the year, that's also going to create a taxable event. And one thing to note about a mutual fund, they tend to be less tax efficient because even if you buy a mutual fund in December, you're incurring the tax liability for all of this activity throughout the entire year. Okay. So while this may seem like a bad thing, what we can actually do with this is we can create some opportunities with that. And here's a little bit what I mean. So well, I love this chart because it talks about the average intra-year decline is actually about 14%. So even in good years, so you look uh, you know, back in 2000, let's say 2010 here, the market was up 13%, but also there's a point when the market dropped 16% in that year. Uh, the market here was up 30, but there's also a point when it dropped six. So even in good years, there's opportunities to utilize the tax loss harvesting strategy. Let me, let me kind of go in, in a little bit more detail how that actually works. So let's say you buy a stock in ABCD Corporation, right? You buy 10 shares at $100 a share. You think it's going to be awesome. So you're, you're putting $1,000 into that stock. And lo and behold, the stock goes up $500. So now you have, you know, $1,500 in stock. And you say, you know what? I mean, I'm up 50%. I'm cashing out. I'm going to sell that. I'm going to net out $500. And I'm going to be paying taxes. Sorry, that's the worst thing ever. Taxes on that $500. Okay, not bad. Hey, you're paying taxes because you got to, you know, you got to win, right? So let's say you buy the International Mercantile Marine Company. 
right? Same thing. So it's the same price, $10, 10 shares at $100 a share. So you're still spending $1,000 here. And let's say it goes down to $800. And you're like, I'm done with this stock. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm going to take my losses on. I'm going to run. So you're going to net a you know, loss of $200. So that can actually offset that gain. So basically, you're netting out, well, the government's saying, hey, look, you owe us taxes on $300 of capital gains. Okay. So you can use a loss to help offset a gain. So when it comes to the strategy of tax loss harvesting, uh, we can actually do that, but still buy back the same company. So let's say we'll just use a, you know, an S&P $500 index fund. All right, so going back to our chart, S&P drops. What you can do is, you know, sell at a loss. And then you can actually buy back that S&P 500 fund. But uh, in order to avoid any you know, tax consequences, you actually have to wait 30 days. It's called the wash sale rule to buy it back. So you can sell the S&P 500, you capture that loss. So let's say it is a, you know, a $200 loss for you. You capture that and then you wait your 30 days and then you buy the S&P 500 back again and then you can continue on investing. Now, one of the big downsides of this is that there's actually two. So one is with a 30-day rule, you can have some opportunity costs to it. So let's say you buy the stock July 1st and July, the S&P 500 shoots up, right? It goes up 10% just in July. You lost that opportunity because you had to stay in cash for those 30 days, or you had to buy basically on non-equivalent type security. So you can buy, you know, you buy an S&P 500, you can buy, you know, a bond fund, you can buy uh, oil, you can buy something totally different. You don't necessarily have to be in cash, but you can't buy a very similar fund, okay? So there's an opportunity cost of waiting those 30 days that may actually, you know, hurt you if the market does well. So the strategy of trying to do this is usually trying to do it in a down market or a flat market where you don't think you're going to be burned by a, a huge increase over those 30 days. The other part is, too, your, your cost basis resets. And what I mean is, so let's say you bought something for $500 a share, and now it's down to $300 a share, so you capture that $200 loss. Well, your new cost basis is now $300. So if you hold this for another 10 years and now – you know, you're, you're new, you sell it later on and it's, you know, $10,000. You're going to pay more and you're going to pay more in tax because you already captured that $200 loss. So that's something to look forward to the, in the future. Not usually a huge deal, uh, but it's definitely something to, to look at and evaluate in terms of what some potential issues with tax loss harvesting is. So to, to kind of take a step back and talk about it, when markets drop, there's opportunities in every down market. One of the things you can do is tax loss harvesting. Tax loss harvesting means you're leveraging losses by selling them. You do have to wait those 30 days to ensure that you're not avoiding, you know, you're avoiding the wash sale rule. You can rebuy the same position after those 30 days. The downside are you can lose some opportunity cost if you're keeping money in cash and you're resetting your cost basis. So it's not always every time the market drops, you should be doing this. There's definitely some things to consider. Uh, some of the unique things about the tax loss harvesting is even if you have more losses than you have gains in the year, you could actually use that against your income. So let's use up to $3,000 of losses each year, and you can actually carry forward that every year. So if you have $9,000 in losses and you never have any future gains, you can use $3,000 over the next three years to offset uh, any income that you have. So that's in a nutshell how tax loss harvesting works. Love to hear any questions you have. If you like the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'd uh, love to love to see you again and let's you know watch some more videos together.